I'm delighted to announce that Dogpatch, our regional partners at Ignite, have been selected to run NDRC, Ireland's National Accelerator Program. It's the first time that a national network of innovation hubs will collaborate to deliver supports to entrepreneurs in every county in Ireland. I'm so excited to work with the venture capital community, the corporate community, our international partners and governments at such an important time for this country. There's been so much meaningful progress in our startup ecosystem over the last 10 years, and as we start a new decade, we're focused on where we can be by 2030. We think we can be globally great at entrepreneurship in this country in the same way that we are with FDI. To achieve this, we'll support globally ambitious entrepreneurs through every step of their journey, through investment, coaching, mentorship, and a founder-first approach delivered by real entrepreneurs and international experts. The new NDRC programs kick off in Q1 of next year. We're so excited for what's to come. Welcome to this, our final NDRC event of 2021. Before introducing you to the stars of the show, the startups, I'm going to take you on a quick tour of the year. It's been a year of firsts with so many highlights since launching the NDRC programs. The early stage supports, which include Office Hours, Founder Weekend and the Pre-Accelerator, were intentionally designed to support founders from that first conversation through to building compelling customer traction. We've delivered 450 office hour sessions, three founder weekends, and three pre-accelerators since launch. We've supported nearly 60 startups on the pre-accelerator alone, many of whom started their journey at office hours and attended a founder weekend. Our CEO at Dogpatch Labs, Patrick Walsh, was quoted in a recent article saying, you can build a company in the regions with more conviction now than ever before. So true. With our regional partners, Portershed, RDI Hub, Republic of Work, and Dogpatch Labs, NDRC supports startups wherever they are based. We're locally embedded and globally connected with entrepreneur-led speakers and mentors who have launched, scaled, and exited global businesses. We are building an ecosystem with impact, thanks to this incredible community. Now, it gives me great pleasure to welcome the program managers leading this pre-accelerator, Victoria and Rick. Hello and welcome to the third and final NDRC Pre-Accelerator of 2021, co-delivered by Dogpatch Labs in Dublin and Republic of Work in Cork. I'm Victoria Hensler, Program Manager at Dogpatch Labs, and I'm here today with Rick Nassar, Program Manager at Republic of Work, and we together co-delivered this Pre-Accelerator with a cohort of 17 exciting startups. These startups are locally embedded, coming from all over Ireland. A quick breakdown, we've got seven from Dublin, five from Cork, two from Kerry, another two from Mayo, and our very first international startup from Italy. And 40% of the startups are either female founded or co-founded. The startups span across nine exciting industries, from educational tech to aviation, from med tech to construction tech, and more. Our startups made incredible progress over the last six weeks. They were able to deepen their customer discovery by doing hundreds of interviews to find out who their ad early adopters are, increase their customer traction, securing paid customers and signups, and to top it all off, becoming pitch ready as you will see very soon. During the program, we heard from seasoned entrepreneurs and investors from across the country and beyond. Thanks to the panelists, Jules Coleman, Alison Kopp, Joe Lennon, and Devin Hughes, and the investors, Neve Sterling, Helen McBreen, Brian Murphy, and Enda Kelly. Also, a massive thank you to the 20 mentors who themselves are experienced founders and who joined us throughout the program and supported the startups all over the past few weeks. Some of them are even here with us today. So thank you all for your valuable advice. Last and certainly but not least, a special thanks to John Bradford. John has been a huge champion for the startup community, bringing the likes of tech stars to Europe. He provided our cohort with invaluable advice with regular AMA sessions. Without further ado, let's welcome our first nine startups.
Have you ever wanted to buy the things that you see on TV while you're watching? Or dress like your favorite film or TV characters? Hi, my name is Miriam Burke and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Click, the technology company that is revolutionizing product placement by letting you go from watching the look to shopping the look seamlessly. From James Bond's Omega Watch to Carrie Bradshaw's Manola Blahnik's, product placement is not new, but it is incredibly underutilized. Of the $650 billion that are spent annually on advertising, just 3% goes towards product placement. But by contrast, millennials like myself spend just over 22% of our waking hours watching film and TV. So why is the market so underserved? Well, for a start, many brands are hesitant to spend their marketing dollars on product placement because the impact of that spend is extremely hard to measure. Secondly, when it comes to fashion or interiors, it's almost impossible for the viewer to be able to tell what brand of coat or jumper the character is actually wearing. At Click, we're solving this problem in two ways. Firstly, for the consumer, we have built a mobile app that allows viewers to discover, save and shop the looks of their favorite characters while they watch. For brands, we're building a product placement management system and a data and insights platform that makes the process easier to navigate and gives brands access to the meaningful data behind each of their product placements. The global product placement industry is a $20 billion market, and it's growing at almost 15% a year. We will target the female millennial viewer and the content and fashion and lifestyle brands that serve them. Our first market is the UK and Ireland, making our SOM 600 million. The bigger opportunity lies in the US, which we plan to target next. We will make our money by charging a tiered SaaS fee to brands who use Click as part of their product placement strategy. Our price point roughly represents 10% of the average product placement deal size. Our main competitor is a US-based company called the TIG.AI. They use AI to analyze video content and surface any available shopping links to the products detected in each scene. Prime Video are also experimenting in this space, having recently made all of the products from the Savage by Fenty fashion show available to shop on Amazon.com. We believe, however, that our ability to be both platform agnostic and to provide a superior user experience for both the viewer and the brand give us a long-term competitive advantage. We will be launching Click with a paid pilot next year, partnering with a global product placement agency, a large international retailer, and a new Irish comedy series. Today, our team is myself and Sarah Kate Fennan, my co-founder. I'm a software engineer and have an MBA from Boston College. Sarah Kate is a creative producer at the Blank Corporation and is also an associate creative producer on season two of Good Omens. Click is the natural next step in cultural advertising and digital shopping. If you'd like to learn more, we'd love to chat to you at our virtual booth. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Carl and I'm founder and developer of Incision. We build personalized workspaces to help teams simplify, coordinate, and collaborate on complex B2B software sales. Today, I'd like to introduce you to Mark. He's a senior account executive at Inatech, a mid-sized SaaS company which develops enterprise-level privacy and encryption software. One of Mark's recent prospects is Sarah. She's the privacy officer at Bluetech. Mark and Sarah have spoken multiple times in recent weeks. They've built a great rapport and Sarah's excited about introducing Inatech to her organization. She's sure they'll see huge value in the product. But there's a lot going on. And while Sarah has been championing Inatech internally, she's having a hard time relaying Mark's messaging and addressing her team's concerns. Without Mark, all she has to work with is a mess of email, PDFs, videos, and links. You see, there's multiple decision makers and stakeholders involved here, each with their own competing priorities. Getting everyone engaged, aligned and on the same page is a real challenge, particularly when handling blue tech specific technical requirements. Right now, this opportunity has stalled. And if Mark and Sarah can't get the team on board, it'll quickly fall through entirely. This is where Incision comes in. It's the sales enablement platform which allows sellers like Mark to quickly and easily build personalized workspaces that encompass everything needed to engage, inform, and educate the entire team at Bluetech. From tailored value propositions, targeted content, technical docs, pricing, and more, Incision helps Mark deliver absolutely everything Sarah needs to champion the product and everything her team needs to get on board. Put simply, Incision takes the friction out of complex software sales. 
delivering a seamless experience for buyers and providing the insights sellers like Mark need to focus their efforts and deliver compelling, timely propositions for each and every member of the decision-making team. The timing right now is perfect for Incision. The global market for sales enablement platforms is currently estimated at $4.5 billion and it's grown. And with significant growth in the B2B software industry more broadly, there's a tremendous opportunity right now for a purpose-built platform in the B2B SaaS space. Finally, a little bit about me. With a background in software engineering, diverse and extensive experience in sales and marketing, and over five years developing products at a sequoia back scale-up, I believe my skill set is uniquely suited to effectively solving this problem and seizing this opportunity. We're currently running a pilot with our version one and engaging participants for our upcoming beta program. If you like what you've heard today and you're excited about what Incision could do for your company, please visit us at incision.io and let's talk. Thank you. Meet Jenny, who's 30 years old and wants to get her clay liners done before she gets married next year. The closest orthodontist she has is another city, and he charges 6,000 euros for such treatment, which she cannot afford with all her other wedding expenses. Not only that, she's also concerned about the time involved in traveling to another city each time she has to go for a checkup. So she checked with the local dentist, Dr. George, to see if George can do it for her at an affordable price. Dr. George told her that he never offered Clearliner services because starting and managing such services is quite complex. Plus, he couldn't find a suitable lab in Ireland that can supply him good quality clear aligners. It's not only the case with Jenny and Dr. George, but based on a 2019 Harvard study, nearly 85% of the US population needed an orthodontic treatment, but only 1% of them were able to get it, either because of higher costs or limited access to orthodontists. This case is common globally. Through Smile Genius, we want to enable the local dentists to offer cosmetic treatments to the 99% of the remaining patients. By offering such higher margin treatments, dentists can earn up to 2.5 times more per hour. Smile Genius is positioned as the most affordable and convenient platform that is out there but that is not our biggest differentiating factor. While all our competitors are focusing on only one side of the market, be it clinic, patient, or the lab, Smile Genius will be the first platform globally that connects all these three under one single roof. Our total orthodontic market is around $48 billion, and our SOM is around $180 million, where we aim to achieve 2% market share in five years' time. This is at the back of a clear line of market that's growing at a 20% year over year rate. Currently, Smile Genius has a transactional model, but we're quickly moving towards a hybrid model where we offer a lower transaction fee for a premium subscription, which is very similar to Shopify payments or Stripe. I'm Nipan Kathuria, one of the co-founders. I have an MBA and a software engineering degree. I have been the head of CRM for Brown Thomas and Arnott's and also founder of Technique in Ireland. My co-founder, Dr. Mark, has been the lead dentist of Ireland's two iconic D2C clear aligner companies. He's currently the co-founder of Love to Smile Clear Aligners. Currently, we are doing a pilot across four clinics and two laboratories globally. In the last two months alone, we have signed seven letters of intent. We are happy to chat to potential investors, partners, and future clients. We're happy to see you at our booth. Thank you. Hi, my name is James. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Connect More, and we're on a mission to solve social media for businesses. So the problem we're solving is that marketers really lack the time and the insight to properly engage customers across social media. And we have a few stats to back that up. It's what we call the perfect store. The last few years have seen massively increased global social media usage. There's a 99% correlation between global e-commerce sales and social media ad revenue. Your marketers say that publishing content is their biggest challenge and they don't have enough time to do it well, while consumers say they actively disengage from brands that do social media badly. So it's the perfect storm, all this increased opportunity and money in the system and brands that can take advantage of it. Solution is connect more. 
We're an AI platform that automatically analyzes your competitor's best social media content, saving you time, increasing your engagement, and helping you win more clients. Now, to illustrate that, let's meet Holly, who's one of our early users. Now, Holly's agency recently started doing social media for their clients, and Holly it does the social media marketing. She's a few years out of college, so she doesn't have too much prior experience, and that's really the profile of the person that usually does social media within most agencies. Before Connect More, Holly spent half a day per week looking at competitors' social media feeds to help her in her role. She struggled with marketing for clients across multiple niches and across multiple social media channels, and she wasn't really involved in prospecting new clients because she didn't have the time or the tools to do so. Since Connect More, Holly adds competitors to the platform, she goes and makes a cup of coffee, and by the time she's back, she has insights to do all those jobs. She can generate reports, show her boss and her client how good a job she's doing, she can create more engaging content for her current clients, and she can also help prospect new clients by quickly analyzing their competitors before they make the sales pitch. Now, the market for social media management was big and it's getting even bigger. It's further accelerated by the forced digitalization of the global economy due to COVID-19. We're gonna scale to 50,000 clients and $38 million annual recurring revenue by the end of 2025, with a lot of room for further growth. Now, other solutions in the market look a bit like this, and it's kind of representative of what you see. There's a few big incumbents with over $100 million annual recurring revenue, really focused on post scheduling with some limited content analysis. Some competitive analysis products do competitive benchmarking, but they don't really do too much content analysis. Now, some startups do predictive analytics, but it's general, it's not industry specific. Connectmore is the only platform that looks at your competitors' social media content and tells you how you can beat them. Team looks like this. Myself and my co-founder, Brendan, worked together for a few years at a quantitative trading firm called SIG. Within a few months of graduating college, I was running a cross-team software project and had an intern reporting to me, whereas Brendan has quite a unique tech skill set, so they actually needed to invent a new role in the company to backfill him when he left. Thank you very much for your time. We're at Connect More, and we're really excited about revolutionizing social media for businesses. If you are too, come and have a chat with us in our booth. Ineffective meetings cost organizations up to $283 billion a year. In 2014, I was appointed by the Irish Minister for Education and Skills as a governing body member of Munster Technological University. It's the most senior level governance structure within the organization, but most importantly, this is where I learned the importance of effective meeting performance. My name is Daniel Donovan, I'm CEO of QuickMinutes.com, and we're on a mission to ensure that you have effective meetings. We have a mature enterprise product with some of our paid customers, including the HSC, Ireland's largest employer, University College Cork, a global top 100 university, and Cork County Council, the largest local authority in Ireland. With new pipeline constantly maturing and a highly scalable service, the future is looking good. Happy to share any revenue data with anybody that wants to come see us in the booth afterwards. The main pain points associated with meetings a lack of meeting structure, and lack of clear meeting outputs. On top of these issues, meeting material, links, communications, and files are scattered all over your virtual environment. Quick Minutes is a meeting enhancement tool that centralizes, simplifies, and coordinates all your meeting activities. Quick Minutes interoperates with all your favorite meeting tools, ensuring that your meetings are consistent, structured, purposeful, and effective. Build annually, our entry point is 36 euro per user per year with a soft limit freemium model that help us develop the top of the funnel. How big is the problem, I hear you ask? Well, according to the latest research, the meeting management software segment is projected to reach 7.7 .7 billion by 2028. Conservatively estimating the total obtainable market as 1% of this puts us at a $77 million a year opportunity. Not to be ignored, the video conferencing market is heating up big time. Estimated at $75 billion by 2027, this will for sure make a very aggressive acquisition environment. There are a lot of new entrants into the market with over $50 million raised in the last 18 months, and one competitor doing $24 million on a Series A, really pushing the ceiling on how big this problem is. None of our competitors are going after the formal, semi-formal meeting environment with a SaaS product. We think the SaaS play can be really beneficial in reaching our customers. We are a proven team, obsessed with process, and well-positioned to capitalize on this opportunity. We're happy to talk 
screenshot the info, hop in the boot later, and also for a special thanks to the NDRC, uh, we're running a lifetime free forever subscription on Quick Minutes using promotion the code NDRC. Head over to quickminutes.com now. And uh, thanks to everyone for facilitating and thank you very much for coming. Hi, my name is Anastasia Negru and I'm the founder of Smart Margins, a TA Dublin spin out company that provides SaaS AI repricing technology that increases sales volumes and revenue for SME online retailers. The global e-commerce market is estimated to be a total of $5 trillion with more than 4 million e-commerce websites globally. For most online retailers, optimizing prices is a manual task done through researching competitors and using spreadsheets. Even when armed with competitor tracker tools, repricing is a manual time-consuming process, especially for retailers with thousands of products. Auto repricing tools are typically rules-based and don't optimize price for competitor activity, market dynamics, or consumer behavior. This means that many retailers are using suboptimal pricing, and this results in suboptimal performance of sales volume and revenue. Smart Merchants is a plug and play solution for time poor retailers. It manages repricing of all the seller's products on multiple channels based on AI price prediction. Our solution will address this by leveraging our proprietary AI algorithms to predict optimal pricing given the context of competitive activity, market dynamics, seasonality, and consumer behavior, achieving high sales volumes and revenues. We have 15 trial partners that have confirmed the problem that managing repricing is a manual task and the tools available to SMEs are not fit for purpose. At the high end of the market, big businesses are served well by e-commerce intelligence platforms like Profitero, but for SMEs, these solutions are too expensive. On the lower end, there are competitors like Pricing and Repricer Express that are mainly rules-based repricers and are typically optimized for volume and not total profit. Smart Margin's competitive advantage is the AI-driven pricing intelligence that optimizes price automatically and shows the performance benefit. We currently have three team members. Professor John Callagher is a machine learning, data science, natural language processing, and artificial intelligence expert. Karan Jadav is the data engineer. He's skilled in big data, data science, and machine learning. And I am the founder, and I have been leading Smart Margins since 2019. I have previous experience working in customer-facing roles for Microsoft, Sage, and Tableau. And I also founded four successful e-commerce businesses in the past. And we're currently hiring for our additional growth. We offer three monthly subscription packages, and we're aiming to hire four more people and launch our MVP in 2022. In 2023, Smart Margins will be spinning out of TU Dublin. After launching in the UK in 2024, our goal is to scale to 1.25 million in revenue in 2025. Come and see me in my booth. I'd love to connect and talk to you if you're a potential partner, customer, or investor. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Carla Rosenkrantz from Barterkind, and to explain to you what we do, I'm going to bring you to the beginning of our story, to Madrid. So two years ago, I was working hard as an English teacher, but finding myself cash poor. I was stressed out and needed the likes of a yoga class, which was something I couldn't afford. Until one day there was a light bulb moment. I thought, what if I offer an English class in exchange for a yoga class? And within a week, I was getting yoga, Spanish lessons, massages, and my entire house cleaned. And the incredible experiences and connections that followed led us to creating Barterkind, which is an online platform that facilitates barter using a token system and blockchain technology. So our solution digitizes and modernizes a barter system, making services more accessible to members. The benefits from our trial have ranged from financial to social, the main ones being barter allowed them to outsource tasks, learn new skills, connect with others in an authentic way and save both time and money. The blockchain technology and token system then lets users go beyond the restrictions of traditional one-on-one -on -one barter with multilateral bartering, meaning I do something for you, you do something for him, he does something for me, and the tokens can be passed on and on benefiting everyone in between. So basic membership is absolutely free and this allows for direct one-on-one -on -one barter. To be part of the token system then you must be a paid subscriber and in exchange for your monthly fees you're given tokens to barter with immediately. So this project is at the intersection of three different markets, the sharing economy, the gig economy, and the blockchain economy, all of which are on the rise. And since the pandemic, so too is bartering itself. 
To calculate our market size, though, we're basing it off one customer segment, freelancers. And we're focusing in on those who trade online, which gives us a SAM of 19.5 billion and a SAM of 195 million. Simbi, Time Republic and Bartercard are our main competitors in this growing space. And one of them facilitated over 400 million euros worth of bartering just last year. Barterkind has its competitive advantages though. We're the only ones using blockchain technology, which allows for superior security and privacy. In fact, Symbi and Time Republic either require or reward you for connecting your social media channels. So there's a sharing of data going on. And at Barterkind, it's the exact opposite with data protection on the blockchain of utmost importance. We'll also be heavily investing in user verification, quality control, and customer service. Alongside a panel of fantastic advisors, we have a small but driven team. I've bartered for years in my personal life, so I feel I know what this platform needs. And Patty, my co-founder, is the blockchain brain who both shares my vision and has the technical skills to make it a reality. Although the platform itself is still being developed, we've got some amazing partnerships, marketing partnerships for our launch. We're also doing a behind the scenes trial phase with over 250 members, and we're looking to expand on this trial. So if you're interested in getting involved or just learning more about Barterkind, pop by my booth for a chat. I look forward to talking to you. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. My name is Paul O'Shea, and I'm the founder of Ireland's Hungriest Startup. At Peckish, we're on a mission to help restaurants market the right dish to the right customer. Did you know that 15% of the global population are functional foodies? These are vegans, vegetarians, celiacs, and those who have food allergies. There's over half a million of them in Ireland alone, and it's quite difficult for them to find where they can eat. It's not a nice to have, it's a necessity. We've interviewed over 200 restaurant owners to date around some of the problems that they face. These stem across updating their menu based on seasonality, consumer trends, and market demand, accountability and transparency with their dietary information and their allergen information, as well as trying to target specific consumer groups through social media. Restaurants just don't have the time to do all of this effectively, but that's why we created Peckish. Our menu search engine allows every type of consumer to find exactly what they want to order in under 10 seconds, whether it's a gluten-free burger or a vegan curry with no nuts. Restaurants receive in-depth insights on their menu activity. They can see how many orders are being sent from us to their preferred ordering platform so they can retain the most profit. As well as that, we provide them with an easy to use, customizable menu management system. Look, I could spend hours talking about the millions of food orders that are made online every day, how the amount of vegans in the world have quadrupled in recent years, or how about we all becoming more conscious about what we're eating. But we all know that already. We're not targeting Michelin star restaurants or your local chipper. We're targeting the million quick and full service restaurants across Europe and the US. Peckish encompasses a range of markets, from allergen awareness to hospitality marketing to food delivery. Absolutely, there are some big players in this market that focus on reservations, click and collect, and food delivery. But these aren't our competitors. These are data points. We are already establishing relationships with some of these market leaders, so we can scrape the menu data from them, fill out their package profile for the restaurant to claim it and activate their subscription, integrate with their ordering platform to create a seamless ordering experience for the user and a frictionless onboarding experience for the restaurant. We generate revenue in two ways. Our subscription model starts at 19.95 per month, and we can generate up to 10% commission from our ordering partners. Now, we've already tested and validated our model with over 30 of the best restaurants in Cork. We're launching in Dublin early next year with 500 more. Our restaurants can't get enough of us, whether it's increasing their revenue and orders, streamlining their ordering process for their customers, or just marketing their mouth-watering menu items. We're on track to do 1,000 online orders by the end of this year, and have generated over 5,000 euro in revenue. Every time somebody performs a search on Peckish, it generates another euro worth of revenue for one of our restaurants. And we're getting over a thousand searches per month. We've got an average 30% growth month on month and our monthly Instagram impressions and TikTok, and TikTok views are going through the roof. I've got a background in computer science with nearly a decade working in the restaurant industry. Our team is a mix of foodies who are industry professionals and up and coming digital marketers. We are raising our seed round with a number of hungry investors, but there's still a couple of seats at the table and this is a delicious offer not to be missed. This is Peckish, the last food app you'll ever have to download. I look forward to talking to you in my room. Imagine a world-leading biotech company that's delivering life-saving medicine, and you usually think cutting edge and new technology. Surprisingly, that is not always the case. Relying on an outdated paper-based system to make a decision in an industry where a single batch of drug product could be worth hundreds of millions of euro can be the norm. 
I'm John Moore from Serif Block, and we are transforming how the biotech industry ensures traceability of raw materials and components. Serif Block uses blockchain to provide verified data that's automatically checked for compliance. Imagine, just imagine for a second if every item in your life ever, you ever touch required a certificate. Try to visualize the amount of certificates that would be. How long do you think it would take to go to each individual paper record and verify that certificate against a list of allowed ingredients? In the biotech industry, we do exactly this. I personally have endured this manual material verification process. A simple use case for Block can save an estimated 14,400 hours off a new facility startup project, which equates to approximately a saving of 1.5 million per project. Our SaaS model is based on a monthly fee per user with enterprise options available, and our pricing strategy is to be positioned centrally among the biotech virtual. The total pharmaceutical traceability market is estimated to be 7.3 billion, with a CAGR of 12.3%. Hygienic component subsection accounts for 875 million. Servblock produces 90% of this material traceability effort, providing annual target market of between 87.5 million euro with adjacent opportunities available. We've identified three customer segments, equipment and raw material manufacturers, our first customers on board in January 22. Assemblers, think large multinational engineering firms. We've had an inbound request and talks are ongoing to roll out a pilot project with another. Finally, Big Pharma, think biotech. We are currently in discussions with two biotech companies who have separately identified the same alternative use case which they would like to pursue. Our market research does not show any direct competitors. Indirect include IDA and PIMS, but they are document repositories and for storing PDF certificates only. Think of unorganized silo data that needs to be manually checked. Before blockchain, a, a solution to prevent fraudulent documents and components entering the supply chain simply did not exist. Recently, we've been identified as one of the top biotech startups in Washer 22. Our MVP launch is on track for the end of this month. We'll have our first paying customers by the end of Q1. And by the end of Q2, we'll have increased our use case for a wider scope of biotech activities. Our first big pharma customers will be onboarded by the end of Q3. I have a 10 year background in the biotech industry. I am the frustrated end user in the process. Thomas has led teams as a principal cloud engineer in the likes of Microsoft and Oracle. And Kevin is a sales genius, which has turned our last business reward catering into the one of the largest in its categories in Europe. We have a unique set of skills to complement each other, a proven track record in business. Thank you, and we're open for questions. Welcome back, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the first half. You've been very active in the chat with some great comments there, so keep them coming. Some of you know the hard work, time, and efforts for startups like ours to reach this level of pitch quality. We want to take this opportunity to let you know that you can actually meet our startups live today after all the pitches at their expo booths. They are excited to speak to you and answer any questions you have. As you've heard, some of the startups have gotten really strong customer traction to date. One of our startups now has seven letters of intent, while others are getting their first paying customers or expanding into international markets. In this founder-first environment, it's been great to see the peer-to-peer -peer feedback and the support that the startups have given each other. And I'm delighted to now welcome the next eight startups to the stage. See you here after the pitches. Catherine's voice had begun to weaken because of her Parkinson's disease. Three weeks into using our app, she reported her voice was much stronger. She could now sing nursery rhymes with grandchildren and hum along to the radio. Similarly, James reported his voice was much louder. He could now speak across the dinner table and engage in group conversation with family and friends. These are just two of the 10 million people living with Parkinson's disease worldwide that will experience difficulty with their voice. Difficulty with voice, what does that mean? It means patients could lose the ability to communicate basic needs and wants with family and friends experience pain and discomfort when speaking, and have difficulty with the muscles involved in swallowing. However, voice therapy can help. It can help maintain voice for up to an additional two years, reduce pain and discomfort when speaking, and finally, maintain a safer swallow for longer, reducing the risk of aspiration and pneumonia. But the problem is, voice therapy is difficult to access because of long public wait lists, and high private costs. My name is Claire. I'm a speech and language therapist that was frustrated with this patient lack of patient care. It's on this basis that I founded teletherapy. 
Our therapeutic app enables patients to practice their therapy from home. How does it work? Patients sign up and meet with a speech and language therapist. They practice and use the app at home while being monitored by a speech therapist and receive monthly reports to both them and their medical team to keep track of their progress. At present, our pilot is working on a B2B model on a user license basis at 75 euro per month. This is to help build out our MVP. Since our launch, we've had a month on month growth rate of 123%. What's the market like? Well, Parkinson's disease is a global problem. Our SAM being 12 million, SAM being 1.3 billion, and TAM being 12 billion euro. And that's just for Parkinson's. This type of therapy can be applicable to other conditions as well. We make therapy accessible. It's remote. It allows for consistent practice, which means better outcomes for patients. Independence, patients are not reliant on family members or carers to bring them to and from appointments. And finally, empowerment, we're empowering patients to help keep their voice and maintain their identity for longer. So meet the team behind me that support me to make this vision a reality from sales and marketing to software engineering and a speech therapist joining us next year. Our consultants and advisory board fill the gaps in our skill set, from re regulatory and legal to business advice and consulting. I believe, and we believe, that this therapy should be accessible to all. We all deserve to communicate, sing nursery rhymes to grandchildren, communicate with a family member over dinner, or hum along to the radio. So join me at my booth to find out more. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Keen, the founder and CEO of CrewApp. Our founding story begins with Jane and I. We've been together since 2009 and since 2014, Jane has worked as cabin crew, first with Emirates and then with Aer Lingus where she currently works. Over that time, her roster uncertainty has consumed our life. So being unable to plan more than six weeks in advance has led to lots of missed family events, milestones, high stress and arguments. In April of this year, I decided to look deeper into this. Airlines have two primary objectives. The first is to deliver its flight schedule, and the second is to meet its customer expectations, both of which require a sufficient number of qualified and engaged crew, which represents the second largest cost for the airline after fuel. On any given day, the 1.3 million crew members around the world are assigned one of five duty types. They're either on training, annual leave, or a day off, or given a flight. In addition, they could be on standby. Standby is when crew are on reserve, you're at home or in the airport, waiting to be called at last minute to operate a flight. Standby crew are critical for an airline's success as they enable day-to-day -day operational recovery. On average, 7% of an airline's crew are on standby every day. Of the 89,000 crew on standby, 70% do not get called to operate a flight. This has two significant impacts. The first is financially on the airline as they still need to pay their crew. The second is on the crew as they spend their day idle waiting for a call that never comes. Excess standby duty rostering costs the airline industry 3.9 billion every year. We also spoke to over 500 crew members with seven global airlines and 80% of them have said that their roster consistently does not meet their needs. Airlines currently set rosters using licensed legacy software providers of which there are five leading players in the market. These players offer many products and services to the airline but don't specifically focus on this problem. We are developing an enterprise SaaS application that is a smart rostering layer between the legacy provider, crew operations, and crew members. Our solution is underpinned by AI and deep learning models, which achieve two things. We accurately predict the number of standby crew required, and we create personalized rosters for crew members. There is no direct competition in the market. However, we recognize that the leading players may move into the space. However, we will win due to our specific product focus and quickness. We charge airlines a fee of 100 euros per crew member per month. Our TAM is 1.6 billion, our SAM is 382 million, and our SOM is 78 million, which represents a 5% market share. We will execute on our mission because we are a strong, passionate founding team who have all the critical skills required to succeed. We combine strategic vision with domain expertise and technology know-how. Please join us in our booth where we'd be delighted to meet you.
Does only knowing all the grammar rules of a language really make you fluent in it? We all know that's not the case. And yet, in most places, that's still the way that the language is taught. And this has become a bit of an issue for Paolo. You see, Paolo's a nice kid. Last year of high school, good grades, and he knows how important English is for his future. However, he's packed with homework and has very little time throughout his day. On top of that, he also knows that learning a language is so much more than just learning the grammar and feels that the options available online are a bit repetitive and stiff. He needs something that is fun, adapts to his needs, and teaches him how to communicate effectively. There's around 600 million Paolos spread all around the world, and the English learning market is estimated to grow from 9 to 27 billion by 2027. Our objective is to earn a space in the online landscape with our binge-worthy approach. Hi, my name is Ricardo and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Speakaplay, the first platform that turns TV series into a language learning experience. Speakaplay is super simple to use. Players just choose a TV series and play with games and activities designed around the show's episodes. And they can also have a chat with fellow players on Speaka Social, our integrated social media platform. This way, Paolo can expand his vocabulary, listening, and most importantly, his speaking skills. This allows him to navigate the everyday and workplace conversations with ease. Paolo can get easy access to the platform with a simple subscription plan. And in case you were wondering about any copyright issues, we simply redirect our players to their platform of choice when it comes to watching the TV series, effectively generating additional traffic and potential revenue for them, which can open up to future partnerships. After market research on more than 250 students, we realized that even big names on the market end up feeling repetitive and lack the ability to adapt to the learner's needs. Our objective is to create an experience that gives our players the activities they need when they're most likely to complete them, by analyzing their performances and behavior with the use of machine learning. I truly believe we're the right people to lead this movement. I've got to know the market in my five years working as a certified teacher and have a strong marketing background. Vanessa also comes from a teaching background and has been leading our e-learning team of six since the beginning. And Alessia is a young marketing enthusiast with a language and communication bachelor from the Catolica University in Milan. And we're not alone. In the past 20 months, we've gathered more than 15 mission-driven individuals, some with decades of experience in their field, to become part of our IT, e-learning, marketing, and media divisions. Speakerplay is a young company, but so far we've been able to secure a deal with a big player in software development to give access to their 400 plus employees, have three presentations lined up with high schools and universities in Italy, and receive 65,000 euros in European funds. And now, our plans for the future. For 2022, our objective will be to focus on the learners, enhancing our platform based on their needs and opinions. And from 2023 onward, we'll start focusing more on the multiple B2B opportunities. There is so much more I wish I could tell you, and I'd love to have a chat with you in our booth. My name is Ricardo, this is Pick Up Play. Thank you for listening. Opportunity. Over 20 years and thousands of users of our construction compliance software, we have come across a massive opportunity and want you to share in its success. I'm Owen Ferris from Off Air Now. We can save companies millions by reducing their equipment hire bill. Brian Galvin is the Managing Director of KPH Construction, and he estimates overhiring equipment is costing him 400,000 per year. He sees hire equipment lying idle during his site visits and in the same location as it was the previous week, untouched. Furthermore, Brian's foremen and project managers do not, do not even know what they have in hire at any given time, especially as hire companies are slow to set up live hire reports. Off hiring equipment, which is notifying the hire company you are finished with them, is like cancelling a gym membership. It is done by multiple complex emails and phone calls. Off hire confirmation references may also need to be recorded, such as the level of distrust between them. With Off hire now, it's as simple as pushing a button on the app or responding to a WhatsApp notification. We send notifications where there's an opportunity to save money, such as just before the equipment goes into the next hire period. This is at a cost of 5% of the savings we generate for them. Brian's off our now subscription costs him 20,000 and saves him 400,000 annually. That is 20,000 to save 400,000. The solutions that currently exist in the market belong to the higher companies. They're in the win-lose quadrant because when their customer saves money, the higher company loses money. Off Hire Now is in the win-win quadrant because our customers save money and we make money. We're in the top right quadrant as we accommodate all higher companies on the one app. 
The competition is in the bottom left as each app is exclusive, exclusive to that higher company. Our strategic competitive advantage is that higher companies cannot play in the top right quadrant. And we have a patent preventing others from entering here also. A United Winkles customer reduced their higher bill by 75% by using their app. On this basis, we calculate TAM to be 3.2 billion globally, based on our 5% charge for savings made using Offer Now. SAM is 240 million in Ireland and the UK. Our sister company, SiteCert, has partners who service the construction sector. These partners are introducing us to over 1,000 construction subcontractors, our sweet spot. This is our initial route to market. We are currently in a pilot with two Irish customers and one UK customer with an annual hire spend of five million pounds. I own Ferris and Guy Jamin has spent the last 11 years developing sites together. I have no share runs operations and has been in construction for over 20 years. Now that Brian is happy, we are looking to scale in the UK and Ireland to our sites of customers. We are also giving them an opportunity to invest in our initial round as we are you. This will assist us in becoming the number one platform for managing hired equipment worldwide. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jag, and I'm a co-founder of Mesherpa. We enable private tutors to scale and deliver better results using automation, assessment, and engaging content. Meet Tomas. He's a private tutor by night and a secondary school teacher by day. He's been growing his tutor business over the last year and has built up a name and some great results for himself. Much of his teaching is one-to-one -one and a mix of in-person and online. He has no more free hours and is turning away students. He wants to scale his business whilst delivering consistent results for more students. He is struggling to move teaching to groups as he feels that parents won't believe that this gives value. He's also struggling with administration workload, specifically feedback, homework, and scheduling. He doesn't get paid for doing this work, but must do it to get paid for his teaching and to reduce churn. Lots of lesson time is wasted too. For a typical 40 minute group lesson, over half the time is taken up with recapping for late joiners and helping those who struggle with previous material. Tomas feels there must be a better way of working. When Tomas put his burdens on the Mesherpa platform, things changed. Administration tasks such as lesson reminders and lesson feedback were automated. Assigning appropriate homework, getting feedback on progress before the lesson is now a click away. Students' progress was updated prior to the lesson. Those that were struggling could be put into a separate group for extra help, and those excelling could be given more advanced material. The parents can see the benefits to them in regular feedback and more constructive use of teaching time. Regular assessment has led to fewer students underperforming when it comes to test time. Tomas has the help to scale his business. The market for tools in this space is nascent and fragmented. Our niche is small to medium sized tutors and schools that have a sizable online element. Our calculations indicate an obtainable market of 10 million US dollars. The current offerings used by private tutors result in silos of data and increased admin loads. We integrate with these tools to make the data available and actionable whilst reducing the, the admin element on busy tutors like Tomas. We're working with two providers on an MVP that focuses on the admin tasks. Our early measurements indicate a reduction in admin of over 25%. We're moving on to features for group tuition, primarily automation of weekly assessment and practice in 2022. We will work to grow our beta trials to these features and then automate our onboarding process. We have a broad range of skills and experience covering commercial and technical domains. We can discover, build, market and deliver a complete solution. We are looking for early stage beta customers. We're also looking to engage with potential partners and early stage supports or investors. Please get in touch at info at or come and chat to us in our booth. Thank you. I'm Lisa Marconi. I'm an interior designer and founder of DesignNet. Through my former design studio, I did hundreds of one-off consultations where I'd go to a client's house and put their room together there and then. Their excitement when this was done was contagious. I started wondering if there was a bigger demand for a service like this. Extensive market research came back with a resounding yes. I realized if I could find a way to digitize me, what I brought to the table when I was standing there in that room, I could really be onto something. And I found my answer in the world of 3D tech. 
I could create a web application that enabled people to access professional designs in a 3D world and seamlessly apply them to their rooms and customize them using gaming tech, whilst algorithms would recreate the guidance I give. And as I started mapping out the platform, I realized this could be a game changer for retailers as well. Their customers' homes would be turned into virtual showrooms for their products. It would be a form of try before you buy for homewares. The online homewares industry is forecast to grow by $84 billion in the next three years alone. Disrupting this could be huge. But who were the customers who were going to help me do this? The natural market for me to look at was millennials. And as I delved into them, I found my beachhead users. The Henrys. The high earners, not rich yet. The Henrys want a home they can be proud of. They don't want to hire an interior designer, but they need help with their home design. There are 37 million Henry households in the UK and US. If I take the 850,000 Henrys in my initial target market, we're looking at a $255 million share of that online homewares market. Design-led is the first product of its kind globally. We're inspiring and empowering a new generation of homeowners to create their dream home themselves and seamlessly moving from design the look to shop the look. Design that takes a 15% cut of everything sold through the platform with future revenue streams projected around user subscriptions and a data analytics offering to brands. Our competition can be categorized into two groups, home design apps, which just offer digital tools to digital, visualize your home, no interior design expertise, or online interior design companies, which aside from the lower cost, throw up all the same problems traditional design studios do. What Designed is doing is taking the tech of the home design apps and putting a layer of interior design expertise over the top. We're about to release our MVP, which will allow users to design their living rooms. With my deep domain expertise, I've conceptualized and developed this innovative platform, and I have a fantastic team of developers and 3D artists behind me who have helped me bring it to life. Thank you. Please join me in my booth so we can talk further about design. Hi, I'm Martin, co-founder of Quega. A few years ago, a large Irish bakery had a problem. They were buying 1 million euros worth of flour per month from a UK supplier. Brexit put this supply chain at risk, increasing costs. They needed to find a new high quality, well-matched, EU-based validated supplier. They hired my co-founder, Mike McGrath's procurement consultancy, to complete the project. It took four months to get to a shortlist, costing nearly 30,000 euros in time and resources. This was for only one product. There had to be a better way. We couldn't find anything suitable, so we built it. Mid-sized businesses face significant challenges to internationalize. 60% of European SMEs don't know where to find the information on new suppliers, buyers, markets, or distributors, and they don't have the staff resources or expertise to validate other businesses. Below corporate levels, language barriers become a real issue. This is costing mid-sized businesses 40,000 to 100,000 euros per annum with existing manual solutions or our competitor solutions. Our solution is a B2B platform that allows companies to easily discover superbly well-matched, verified new supply chain partners to post or find new deals, connect with smart matched and verified companies and to communicate in any language. We are different as we focus on using technology to build trusted relationships between the right people in well-matched companies as people do business with people. Our initial focus is on the EU and UK food and beverage markets, in particular connecting supermarket buyers or distributors with artisan and free from food producers. If Quega had existed for that Irish bakery, they would have saved 29,000 euros and almost four months of their time. We make money through freemium and premium memberships and through enterprise packages. We operate in a market with over 12 million businesses and a high cross-border trade volume, which is undergoing huge change, where 80% of B2B transactions are moving online within the next five years. Our SOM is 7 million, 750 million euros, with a SAM of 13 billion euro and a TAM of almost 100 billion euros, including all other sectors and all the main global markets. We are happy to see that there is competition in this emerging large market, but our competition is taking a very different approach, following the old directory-like approach of traditional marketplaces. 
We launched in Q2 21. We now have 370 businesses signed up from over 37 countries with over 80 million euros of deals posted and negotiated through our deal center. We have a strong team. My background is banking with a strong focus on company verification. My co-founder Mike is a procurement expert who previously, previously founded Supply.ie. We are fixing the problems he deals with every day. We also have a strong lead developer with a platform development experience and a digital marketer on initial team. We are raising a pre-seed round. Half of it is committed and we are open to conversations. Thank you. Meet Jewel, an up and coming indie artist from Belfast. Over 250 fans listen to him every month on Spotify, but just how much would you say he earned from it last year? He made just $40. And the crazy thing is, is that the bottom 99% of artists made just $26. And keep in mind, this was in a year where there was no concerts and so there was no tickets sold. So if you learn one thing today, let it be that streaming is fundamentally broken for independent artists. But why does the $13 billion industry fail to pay independent artists in the first place? And the reason is because as it turns out, the vast majority of your 10 euro a month subscription, it doesn't actually go towards the artists that you've listened to. Instead, it's all pulled together, then distributed amongst all the artists on the platform based on the number of times that they were streamed. And that last bit is important because it means that even if you were to listen exclusively to independent artists, most of your money would still go to the chart toppers. What we realized was needed was a new streaming platform built specifically for independent artists and their fans. And that is why we're building Minim. The way Minim works is that instead of paying royalties per number of streams, each user's subscription is split up proportionally then given directly to the artists that they listen to that month. You might be thinking, well, that sounds cool in theory, but what about in practice? Well, Joel has actually been testing our MVP and we could not be more happy to say that given the current number of fans he has on Spotify, he is now on track to earn $2,460 this year on Minim alone. It's a night and day difference. For listeners, for five euros a month, they get access to the easiest way to discover and listen to great independent music. There's these gorgeous artist interviews, which are just the first of many features that we have planned to bring the fans closer to the artists. But perhaps the most important feature is the fact that Minim really is the easiest way to support artists because you get that conscious consumerism of Bandcamp with the ease of use of Spotify. You don't need to remember to subscribe to any Patreon pages and you don't need to buy any merch. You can just stream and you can rest assured that you're supporting the artists because we show you where every single cent of your subscription goes. And we think this transparency is important in a world where artists and fans are becoming more and more aware of the economics of streaming and subsequently disenfranchised from the major streaming platforms. Minim exists to provide a sustainable alternative, and it is the most favourable platform for artists and conscious listeners alike. Our 10% cut reflects our ethos of fairness and transparency. And global independent music streaming is a $1.34 billion market, growing 27% over last year. We aim to capture about 10% of that using Ireland as our testbed. We started in September and soft launched our MVP one month ago. Now we're working with top PR firms and independent labels to expand our catalogue. And the feedback from the artists and fans testing this has been super encouraging, so we could not be more excited to be working on this. The two folks behind this are myself and Daniel. Previously, I built a social donations platform and Daniel's actually a musician himself, so I think it goes without saying that we both love and care for independent music, which is why we have set out to build the economy we think it deserves. Thanks for listening, and yeah, please stop by your booth and say hello. That's a wrap. Congratulations to our startups and all of what they've achieved over the past six weeks. Huge shout out to the wider Dog Patch and Republic of Work teams, including the production team that's here behind the scenes today to make a day like this happen. And a massive thanks to you, the audience. Without you, this event wouldn't have been possible. So thank you for your time. Wishing everyone a happy festive season. To keep the excitement going, we would love you to make your way to the expo booths to meet our startups. So go say hi, introduce yourself, and ask them about the businesses they are creating. See you there.